Welcome back everyone. Um, I'm going to talk about a number of things about my Tron XY. I'm going to talk about the uh, primer. I'm going to talk about fan speed. I'm going to talk about auto leveling. I'm going to talk about acceleration and I'm going to talk about ambient air temperature. And I'm going to talk about hard mounting. So let's start. So in a previous episode I mentioned that I managed to get the filament jammed in here and I drilled it out. I was pretty sure I, I didn't damage this, but I have since then noticed that this sometimes on um, retractions, this actually moves a few millimeter. And I thought that was because I drilled it, but since then I've seen quite a few people on Facebook talking about that this pops out. So I've actually bought a new one, which is going to be much better like this one in here, to hopefully fix that, because that would affect stringing, because there's a bit of elasticity. So when it pulls it out, it's actually delayed by the amount of give there is in that. Uh, I have been umming and ahhing and I still have not made a decision about what I'm going to do about fans. In the end I just printed out this one and uh, stuck a 40 by 25, might be 30, uh, fan on there. And I, uh, I actually drilled this out. The, the the gap was so small that barely any air came out so I uh, drilled out significantly and that certainly increased the flow but in my water cooling hat mindset I'm like flow is most important so let's crank this baby up so I've actually got this plugged into an external power supply which you can't see which is adjustable and although this is a 12 volt fan you can always run them way beyond their uh, given voltage normally you can run them to about 18 volts but surprisingly this one went as far as I could go which was 24 volts so it was really moving some decent air and achieving some good cooling which I assumed would result in much better results however it didn't it got much worse so can you see all those cracks in there well, that is from me cooling it too much on the other side no cracks looking on, on the on the curved surface there so I actually turned that off um, along here and you can see it stopped happening so that was one of my fails if you like now in a previous video I mentioned that although this you had an auto leveling enabled in the g-code it would go through doing the g-code across the the board or the heated bed but when it printed it, it completely ignored it and that's why I've managed to wreck my my blue sticker a number of times and I finally managed to figure out what the process is which wrecks it because I, as I mentioned on the Facebook sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't now I am running um, the Marlin 1 firmware with the Tronc uh, Tron XY 3A 1.1 firmware and what it is if you go you fire up the controller and you go into preheat and preheat for PLA so it heats up the bed and the well that's the bed and heats up the uh, the nozzle and then you wait for it to heat up and then you uh, print from SD it completely ignores the auto leveling numbers if you like so the print uh, the, so the print process will still go through the actual process of checking the level but it actually doesn't take that into account when it prints it so what I've had to do is I've had to set up preheat and then restart it like turn it on and off and then print from SD and then it will remember slash actually use the three uh, the auto leveling settings um, I was a little bit concerned with how squishy and f how wide and fat the corners were when I was printing. So when I looked into that, I increased the acceleration. At one point I actually increased the jerk. Now I would suggest you all try increasing the jerk. It is just so awesome when you massively increase the jerk from stock 20 to like 70 or whatever. It sounds so cool. It sounds like a machine gun. But the print's a bit uh, pretty bad. So I went into changing the acceleration and that helped because like Cura and uh, Simplified 3D, its time estimations were way faster than it actually took. 
So I started playing with acceleration and the stock is 400. Now interestingly enough, if you go and change the, the settings from 400, you can't set it back to 400, you can only set it back to 500. But I've, this is currently printing with acceleration of uh, 1500. And increasing the acceleration obviously reduces the time, probably more than it does increasing the print speed because it never really gets to the print speed because it's accelerating so slowly. And it did increase the squareness of my corners, so I really think that's a good setting. I did try it at 4000, which I was surprised at how well it prints at 4000, and, and in, in reality it was completely doable with this printer. What happened though is it actually managed to it created this kind of disaster. This is this here, and obviously this way, not this way, and it just shakes it far too much that it, it just can't print something narrow and tall. I mean it printed that curve which is this way, but uh, couldn't do it that way which is that's because on the on a printer like this it's shaking the heck out of the the y-axis which means you can't print something very tall and thin without it having problems. So I've had to put that back to 1500 which managed to print that. Uh, I do have a lot of problems with temperature. I print in a galvanized steel garage with no insulation and it gets really really cold so it, it's winter here so it gets below zero and that definitely affected my ability to print with uh, sticking to the bed even though the settings were the same and actually the layers sticking together so I actually managed to build myself I just happened to luckily have like the most perfect pieces which you can't see in the video of polystyrene like perfect height I managed to build myself an enclosure out of polystyrene and I put a heater in there I covered it in a sheet and ran it like that now I was very weary about how someone on the Facebook page said that they did pretty much the same thing. They enclosed their printer for better print quality, for less warping, by trying to keep the entire thing at a higher temperature. And they have managed to warp these acrylic parts hardcore to pretty much their bin material. So I left a, a significant opening so it wouldn't overheat. However, I had a similar problem. What happened is that though it didn't get hot enough to bend my acrylic it did get hot enough for the for the filament to expand and blocked up this jolly uh, tube here so it became the two millimeter and it could no longer be pushed in there and it was a complete pain trying to get that back out of the out of the tube because it had become two millimeters uh, something else I did is I went and I hard mounted the bed to I guess the frame and the theory with that is that there again the problem with the printer like this is it moves the print job the taller it gets and the heavier it gets the more you more forces work on the, the table to compress these springs a bit uh, which reduces accuracy especially if you're talking about big things and I'm somewhat printing pretty big heavy things um, that's a one-to-one -one scale of a stock for a, a gun for my Nerf gun. Yeah. So I removed the springs and put four four millimeter screws under each one which increased rigidity. And now obviously you couldn't do that unless you are using auto level but since you're using auto level you might as well. Uh, the other thing to remember is that you still have uh, adjustment in this this angle here because you can adjust the height of each one of these Z's. So you still can level the bed that way, you just can't do it that way anymore. Although if you really wanted to, you could shim them to do that, but for mine, it's pretty much level. In saying that, this aluminium does have a bow in it, that way, whoops. And the last thing I was going to talk about, which I don't think I mentioned, is some of the mods I've done, which are these tensioners. I've had a lot of... <laughs> intended things but haven't really got there yet so I mean these are a must-have but at the same time they're somewhat eye candy the original system works this is definitely more rigid 
at least this one is. However, you've just moved the problem somewhat to the back. This here, this motor is on a piece of thin acrylic and that just becomes the bend. So you do this up and that back is bending, like you probably can't tell in the video. So to some degree you can't really get amazing tension because you're just bending the back. And there is a, a um, replacement part there. So I think if you're going to bother with that you definitely need to print out the, the stronger one at the back so you can get that really nice and tight. And somewhat the same for here. It's not as bad because there is the steel part here. But what it does is that if, if you do this up, it bends this motor in. And the problem with that is that this motors are attached to this piece of acrylic here. And so that just wrecks the alignment of this these wheels. So that was a bit of a painful experience to have to deal with that. Because of course it pulls the, the wheels out of alignment and so you really can't have too much tension this way either. Though the tension this way is not in my opinion as important as important as the y-axis. Uh, the other thing I would say is that this thing, although technically correct, is pretty floppy. I'm not going to push it now. Uh, obviously all the forces are acting on it this direction, and it is strong and rigid in that direction. However, on this direction, it is bendy as. And I actually managed to break mine, trying to get it off the bed. Obviously it was not the first one I tried to print. So I would have liked to have seen that this to be a bit thicker just for added rigidity uh, and I had to use washers because frankly you could just screw those screws and it was just pushing the plastic in. So that's where I am now. Um, I'm going to talk about stringing probably in the next video and Cura Simplified 3D uh, and hopefully some Nerf gun parts. So subscribe if you want, if you don't, then don't. See you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye.